Okay, let's take a look at the Nyan bonus. They're looking decent. Let's put the music on. I like the gold here. Let's make a prediction real quick. Keep it interesting, I guess. Why not? What's up, Elo? How you doing, buddy? At the moment, well, not that many people are here, so not that many people to predict. But we'll, we'll get more predictions as the run is going on, right? All right, so let's focus on the game itself. Uh, let's see, first and foremost, if we can get a snipe. It's not my immediate interest, but, you know, it bears, bears looking at, right? So we could get a snipe here if we're lucky. We could also get a lot of gold here. Yeah, the gold is really a premium, in my opinion. And there's not that much loss for doing this, right? So there's a couple shops. A shop here, and, and this path we have... Wait, this we have, like, like elites. Oh, this is a decent path as well, actually. So take a look at these paths. We have an elite on the right side that leads to a sparkle just the same as this one on the left side. The difference is there's an extra uh, an extra normal fight. They're both very similar. And both of them start with this point right here. Let's get the event. So copying the map. Yeah, why why is the map doing that? I'm not sure guys. I'm not sure. I don't know. I can't see my audio. My map is full of coffee stains. It's a mystery to me. What's up, Pizza Monster? I'm doing doing well. Going to the office sucks. How you doing, Trickle? Yeah, I can imagine everybody's they're like, why are we in the office? Did, did, did we not learn in quarantine that going in the office is not necessary? Which is not, it's not a thing that we learned? It's less so that the world's against me and I need to just like really sit down and tackle and clean my computer out. You know, it's been a long time. I hope the stream's not laggy. It looks like my, my bit rate is pretty stable, but... Uh, yeah, I hope it's not like it looks relatively stable. Is it dropping? What's up, Red, Red Ice Rabbit? Um, it depends on the op, the, the, the job in your environment. It's true, yeah, it, it depends. Uh, what do we think about this first ch card choice? Like pummel for damage. I still play Monster Train. I haven't played it in some time. I do have to tackle the DLC. I was dealing with so many things in my, my own head, my own headspace. Uh, I just didn't have time, or I didn't make time to do Monster Train. But we're going we're gonna to do the DLC. We're going to make some videos and maybe break the game or not. We'll see. We'll probably tackle it. If not today, tomorrow, or this week. Elle made it. She wants me to go get a haircut. And you know what? I don't mind getting a haircut. I think a haircut does me some good. More than I, more than I like to admit, you know? A haircut kind of refreshes me, so I'm gonna go get a haircut around four. So we better get a couple wins before four. I, how about this? We'll get two wins before four o'clock. If we're lucky, we'll get three wins. Oh, I, mean, I think pummel's okay here. Pummel's okay. It's a damage card that you know operates of strength that Ironclad loves to take. Ironclad is not opposed to taking strength early, right? And there's exhaust synergy. Now, Ironclad has a lot of exhaust synergy. It's floor one. I don't know if that's going to come to be. But in the very least, it's eight damage, right? I convinced myself. Let's go here. Oh, Trixie Sticks. Thank you so much for the $10. Lay back at really getting the corn ticket. I appreciate that, and I'm, I'm glad I could help. Thank you for the donation. Oh, I forgot that we can makes this card horrible. Uh, okay. Thanks again. Uh, is it weird that I'm better at defect than Ironclad? Yeah, that's a little bit weird. That's a little bit weird. You either smoke too much or not enough. Yeah, I guess you gotta, you gotta find the balance. The Ironclad's 
more consistent than the defect. I mean, I, I guess it, how often do you play the Ironclad? What's the sample size here? Because, uh... Yeah, thank you, Tracy. Um... Alright, so I'm, I'm looking between these two cards. I like Iron Wave because I'm looking at the Guardian, right? And the Guardian is basically saying to me, you're going to want some capacity of some block, if that makes any sense. That's true, Traco. Commuting is like a big time sink. Especially, it depends on where you live. If you live in a congested area like you do. Oh yeah, that's a problem, Colder Soap. Because I would say 50% win rate on Ironclad should be the baseline. And I would say 40% win rate on Defect is the baseline. Now, if you're a particularly good player, we're going 60% upwards of Ironclad. And I would say 50%, a little bit more than 50% for Defects if you're, if you're high achieving. Now, if you're a particularly amazing player, maybe specialized in Defect, you probably hit 60%. If you focus exclusively on focus and orb builds and neglect anything else of any creativity and, and bash your face with frost orbs, you can probably get 60% or more. But Ironclad in general is, should be winning more often. So, I, I, and we're talking about purely as the class, but the player makes all the difference, you know? Okay, so I'm gonna go. Um, let's start loading. I think I'm gonna go Iron Wave here. Not upgraded though, but a decent upgrade. So a curse here for a relic, and we can remove the relic at the shop. Is you think we'd rather remove the curse here to get a relic? What do you guys think? I don't often take this. I often take the max HP to balance out the fact that I took max HP for the gold and leave myself the option to remove a strike, because removing strikes is very good. But we can roll the dice, and there's a shop right here to remove the regret. That takes the opportunity cost of removing the strike. Is the opportunity cost worth it? Whoa, whoa, was it worth it? Honey, let me tell you. Let me tell you a thing about worth. Oh, boy, that's exhilarating. I feel like I just, ga I just gambled. I just gambled and got away with it. Die in act one? No, why, why do we die in act one? Oh god. Fire breathing versus barricade versus anger. I don't like anger for the guardian here. And then we have barricade. Uh, fire breathing is good for these elites. I'm going for three elites, right? It's probably pretty likely. It's pretty likely we're going to have triple sentry. So fire breathing is pretty good for triple sentry. However, barricade I could build around this early. And barricade does not help me in these elites. I want to go for three elites here. And if we're going for three elites, fire breathing makes the most sense. Keep the curse for fire breathing. It's not even wrong. But yeah, I'm not keeping the curse, I don't think. Ugh. It's, it's, this is really hard to say because right now Barricade doesn't do anything for the deck, but it's an amazing future-proof card. That's awesome, Elo. Immolate. Removal, Frozen Eye. <laughs> Immolate or Frozen Eye. Keep the Curse of Fire Breathing. Um, now we have Immolate, Fire Breathing, Shenanigans, and now things are coming together. Do we just remove Regret by Immolate and that's it? Um, how do we feel about buying Immolate for 177? Do we like buying Immolate for 177? Or do we rather buy one of these relics and... I 
I bought all the things. I bought all the things. I would say it's worth my money. Um, so now we're gonna make a decision between popping now or waiting. I think we wait here always. Get shockwave out. Get fire breathing out. Get the curse out. Although this is not a bad opening. Um, I'm gonna wait one more turn. Alright, let's go. I only got that block for 15 each time. If I want to block. Oh, here I can just block for 10. Which is only one damage. Boom. We got emulate with our block. And now we gotta decide whether or not we want to block for 5 or do 12 damage. Pummel gets really bad afterwards. Pummel becomes horrible after this debuff. It's not even a joke. Emulate wins, so we're taking quite a bit of damage here, unfortunately. That was a pretty... took a lot of damage there. Ice cream, wow. Okay. Ice cream is great. Ice cream bloodletting is screaming my name. Oh my god, it's screaming my name. Oh my lord, I'm, ex I'm excited. That is so exciting. Oh yes. Alright, so we can get Cleave for more AoE with Immolate. I think we just skip here. Close in for more Weaken, but we already have the Shockwave. I skip here. Maybe we go rest and do two more leads and then we're, we're good to go. And look at this turn. Look at this turn. Look at this. One damage only. Oh boy, you can't make this stuff up. You can't make this stuff up. It's too good. Already. Pommel Strike draws one. I feel like I need more block though. One thing I could say is my block is a little bit sparse. I, I even might upgrade Iron Wave to get more block. Just a little bit more block hits thresholds of Tori, which is really important, you know? Reckless Fire Breathing, unfortunately, you know, the Dace is still drawn. I and mean, this is not a bad card if you think about Fire Breathing, but I would like to have Evolve. Is that is that the wrong approach? When I see this, I'm like, I want to evolve here. What's up, Vorpal? I, I care less about the AoE fire breathing and more about the, the draw that the days is going to affect with. Affect my deck. So... I'm probably skipping this. It's like a free cleave. I know you're trolling a little bit, but like, okay. When you draw the daze, it does an extra 7 damage. AoE. But Fire Breathing needs to be in play first. If we get Evolve, I'm, I'm all for it. What about Pommel Strike, though? Oh, I'm gonna skip here. Let's see what Relic we get, guys. I went left. Alright guys, like I didn't ask for all these rares. I didn't necessarily want this. Alright, so we got a lot of rare relics. Let's rest here. Because I'm about to do the sparkle. I didn't get bashed here. But it's probably worth it to do bloodletting here, right? That feels appropriate. Well, that's a lot of damage I didn't want to take. I was 3 damage off. I took so much life. Bloodletting helps me heal up. Rupture with bloodletting. Uh, 
Uh, the problem is... Yeah, I gotta make a video on the leeches thing. Pretty slow. Yes, I have bloodletting, but... Yeah, I mean, ruptures is really slow here, guys. I'm sorry. I wanna... I wanna give it its glory. I'll make a video on it. Wild Strike is a uh, wound from Fire Breathing. However, we don't have Evolve, which is... I'm gonna go ahead and skip here. I still want some more block. Hopefully this fight goes well so I can actually do the elites. But I might just get the, the sparkle here. The guardian himself is already kind of kicking my ass. The guardian's already kicking my ass just a little bit. Another shockwave. What's the valet? Can't take another shockwave here. You guys think we can get through this sparkle with liquid memories? So it's gonna be like a Volan or Triple Century. Triple Century, we have double immolate, immediate kill. Like a Volan, we have a bash turn with double immolate, also does a lot of damage. Uh oh. Uh oh. So we had to burn liquid memories for that. Now, could we have... Could we have done them without liquid memories? What do you guys think? Spark goes out of the way now. Let me use the bathroom. So, so we, we agreed that, uh... We agreed that, we, that liquid memories saved us a lot of life, and it was probably like the only play there, right? So, Reapers is a decent card, and with Lantern, we have a little bit extra energy in the fight. But there must be something to be said about Iron Wave number two, right? We are low on block, and Iron Wave, upgraded, if I can upgrade a card, is as if I'm putting a Defend in the deck. I can't really justify that. Wow, we're taking a lot of damage, though. Ow. Oh man, and now we gotta ask ourselves, can we even beat the Guardian? This might not make it past Act 1, guys. This might not make it past Act 1. Ow. At this point, I would say I really want Reaper. Before anything. It's gonna weaken me, though. He's gonna weaken me, but I really want to get Reaper out, even despite the fact that I'm weakened. Alright, that's good. That allows a Reaper, which is huge for my small... Uh, a healing, I'll take it. Region Pot, okay. Disarm, okay. Okay, now we can do the Guardian. Disarm a Region Pot. And I was worried. Oh my god. Okay, that's an answer for the, the disarm, Tori. Okay, Guardian is doable. Guardian is doable. And now we could upgrade. Yeah, I'm going to be taking a look at the DLC this week. If you guys notice, I put day one on my, uh, on my title. It's because uh, I've been really battling with myself to just like, make a complete self-revolution. I don't know if I should like have a podcast and talk about you know, what I've been going through. 
like just kind of mentally battling with myself but you know for the past 12 13 14 years i've, I've just kind of been uh you know I've, I've had my own battle of course and i'm trying to make a, a real change you know but um let's focus on now nah, upgrade the charm okay let's see the, the upgrade is gonna be important here No, for me, it was I, 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 I just come to really realize that I haven't really had control. I'm just like, the way I consume content and, and live my life and was, was, have been living my life past like 12 years, it's, it's really been like an addict, you know? Um, with consuming Twitch and playing games and just like not truly being present in my life in a lot of different ways. So I just got to come to terms with, terms with the fact that I... <clears throat> I've kind of been like a functioning addict, a video game addiction and technology addiction. So uh, I got to make a true change, you know. That's all. I put so much. If you guys only knew the hours I spend watching streams and playing games, and just it's it's just unheard of, you know. It's not good. It's not good. So, um. Yeah, the upgrade here is weird because yeah, healthy gamer GG. Yeah, he's great. He's really great. I think Iron Wave Plus. Ah, it feels bad. Iron Wave Plus is like going to be my best block in the deck. Yeah, maybe Disarm is the best upgrade, but we do have Tori. Maybe, maybe permanent weaken. Permanent weaken and vulnerable. It's good for Act 2 as well. Although this is decent for Act 2 fights in some fights. With Tori. Hmm. Hmm. Permanent weaken and vulnerable. Better block. More energy. More energy, maybe? No, no, for sure I want to do the, the monster train, but I was just, um, I was in the right headspace, you know, Leo, Leo, Leo but I, I'm, in the, I'm in the right headspace this week. We're going to do monster train, don't worry. Uh, I'll announce it on Discord. Today I have to go get a haircut, but um, maybe I'll come back later tonight, or maybe to definitely, I'll have a lot more free time. You'll be amazed at how long I'll be streaming, because if I'm not giving into my, you know, self hedonistic behavior of whatever I'm doing, I'll have a lot more time to be productive and be present, so yeah, we'll play all the games, don't worry let's go I'm, I'm, I mean, Disarm is just a really good card so okay, so I want to play these three cards, and I, I really hope that I can split him, so I don't take the big damage. And that's just a, a, a hope game, you know? I, I can't really change the, the cards that I draw, I just gotta hope. And it worked. I get Reaper out of the deck, which is fantastic. I get some excess uh, energy. I get Shockwave applied. I can just take this hit for one damage. Save myself the energy. Take one damage, no problem. Get this out of the deck. I think we try to go for permanent vulnerable here. Again, I take a little bit of damage, no big deal. Tori is amazing. I'm not taking damage here either. But I can save the chip damage for sure. And I'll just save the distraction, not very good for here. Bloodletting, I don't even think is necessary. I mean, I gain more energy for the rest of the fight, but I'm already gaining energy as it is, right? Ice Cream is just stupidly good relic. I mean, there's no no wonder this is a rare relic. And with the new Bloodletting, oh my god. I dare say that this Act 1, I mean, I don't know how Calibers is going to shape up, but... Comcast has been shitting on me, but it looks like my, my, my bits are relatively stable, my bit rate. I hope it's not blacking too bad, because it looks relatively stable. Oh no! It is dropping.
Oh, my bit rate is dropping a little bit. Game Conquest really is shit gummy. Sorry, guys. I can wait. I can I can do this and wait. What do you guys think? And get another hit of Immolate in. What do you guys think? Like what I'm what I'm saying is that because fire breathing exists, I could always proc him here. Look at this. Look at this damage. Incredible. But now I have a lot of burns in the deck, so I gotta end I gotta end this fight quickly. Cause I have a lot of burns in the deck. One damage only still. But remember, he's not weakened anymore. So I gotta end this fight quickly. And he's running out of vulnerable. We're fine. Immolate wins the fight. Look at that. Tori is just a godsend. Tori is a godsend. Look at Immolate just destroying the fight. Look at it, guys. Look at it. Look at it. Boom. We kept our potions, which is nice because we didn't get a potion drop. The decent amount of gold. And then we get these cards. How do we feel about these cards? Okay. Yeah, the intern is acting up a little bit. Uh, why is that? You know, it may be my computer. By the way, we got through Act 1, guys. Let's make another prediction. For sure, we would have liked to see. Uh, for sure, we would have liked to see. Uh, we would have really liked to see. Uh, impervious. We would have liked to see impervious. Why? We're not so lucky. A second Reaper in a deck that doesn't really have strength. I mean, Brutality, we can gain some card draw to go with our Bloodletting. So we'll have six card draws and we can, you know, maybe go cycle into the cards we want to see more often, like Immolate. And we could do Bloodletting more often as well. Is Brutality better than Reaper here? The concept of having um, extra card draw per turn to utilize with Ice Cream potentially. Or a second Reaper with no block. However, we do have Immolate stuff and Bloodletting for energy. Who would take Brutality over Reaper here? Who would, who would be the madman to do that? Okay. Now, I know you guys watch a lot of streamers and they probably don't take a lot of Rooney Dome. All right, but I'm a streamer who is not opposed to Runic Dome. Maybe to a fault. Odd Thomas, how you doing, buddy? Yo, 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 yo. The alternative is we could take Astrolabe and get three upgraded, change our three strikes into something else. Right? You take Black Star and use our Tori, plus our Immolate and destroy Elites. Or we could take the fourth energy. All right, guys, make a prediction for Act Two. Do we beat Act Two? Prediction time. I'll take I'll take care of it real quick, and we'll give you guys two minutes to decide. 
do we beat Act 2? Yes, no. If we end up using calipers, then dome won't matter as much. That's exactly true. So how many elites do we want to do? We can do two elites here, or three elites even. That looks perfect. Let's do three elites and get some events. This is perfect. This is perfect. I mean, with Ice Cream, we probably could have taken Astro. Honestly, I probably should have considered Astro more. Because with Tori, I like to be very exact of how much damage I'm preventing, you know? We have Battle Trance. That's really nice. You guys will see anything else other than Battle Trance, right? Yeah, I'm, I may have loved taking... Uh, I want to predict it myself. Can I predict it myself? Nope. Who sees anything other than Battle Trends here? Probably nobody, right? But also, I am a little bit upset at myself that I didn't take Astrolab because having the ability to see intentions with Tori and stuff is pretty nice. But we're, we're going we're gonna to take that fourth energy and we're going to love it, okay? Does Fire Breathing do anything? It does 7 damage later on. So we have disarmed just in the nick of time, which is nice. These Reapers, however, don't do anything. And I want to use a potion, maybe now. What do you guys think? Because the potion drop is getting higher. Potion drop is getting higher, and I want to take advantage of that. Even though I have lethal here. Uh, do we regret... Do we regret... Uh, <laughs> Using the potion here. And if it gives us a potion drop. Okay. Maybe I do regret it. What do you guys think about Shruka to get rid of Strike? It needs an upgrade, doesn't it? Hey, my engine is dropping. Uh, I'm going to do a speed test real quick, guys. Now, I want to determine if it's my, my computer or if it's my internet. I think it's the internet because Comcast is pretty crappy, but... I must say that my computer has been, um, you know, having issues with USB ports. Maybe my Ethernet is, like, configured weirdly. But the internet has been shitty recently. Watching the series Nugo? I found my... That's a good show. Yeah, we're having some internet issues, guys. Hopefully it stabilizes. Would you mind doing a speed test on, on your, yeah, your computer, maybe? It shows my upload is good. It shows my upload is like 30 plus, which is perfect. Hopefully it's not too bad, boys. Uh, there's nothing I can do about it. You know, it's frustrating as a streamer when your internet is not cooperating. So the best thing I can do is just hope that it you know, cooperates. No downloads, no downloads, no. Besides, downloads wouldn't affect my... Well, I mean, I'm not throttled. It's not throttling. Like, it's not being throttled by downloads or anything. It seems to be relatively stable, though. So, anyways... Shrukit requires an upgrade to be really decent, right? But still, it's the card I want to take. I want to get some better block. Alright, do we want to take a curse and get a relic and get so lucky like a Tori? Or we rather remove a strike, right? I think we're at the point where we want to remove some of these strikes. Yeah, Alpha this is a great show. Anchor is fantastic. Evolve is pretty good. Now, how sad are we that we can't play Anchor and Evolve? Evolve being fire breathing and emulating the deck, plus the slavers and the book of stabbing. Also, Evolve means power through, becomes better, which we love. But I mean, Anchor is just really premium. Especially with Calipers, there's a world where we might get like entrenched down the line and we can get a nice starting block with Anchor and Calipers. 
Now, the other thing is Sling of Courage. We can go for Sling of Courage and help us manage these three elites. The extra two strength is going to go for three elites here, which is going to pay off. Plus, we're going to get elites in Act 3. Plus, we're going to have an elite in Act 4. So, Sling of Courage is like elite-centered. Anchors for the boss and for all the hallway fights. But we have Blood Vial to sustain, and we have two Reapers, right? So since we have two Reapers and Blood Vial, we're actually getting some pretty decent sustain. Would we rather like two Strength and get more use out of Pummel in these Elite fights? And again, this is going to pay dividends all the way up into Act 4. Whether I take Sting of Courage or Anchor, I won't be able to remove. Evolve card remove. I think these relics are too good to pass up here. It's whether or not we would think we need the extra help in these elite fights. Do we need the help in elite fights? With fire breathing immolate, the slavers should be pretty good, right? Shockwave fire breathing immolate. Slavers are pretty good. With immolate in the deck, Gremlin Leader is also pretty doable, but I can see us running to some trouble. Um and Book of Stabbing, we would like the, the extra the strength for sure. Anchor's good because we're lacking block. That's true. And also, we do have Calipers. So that's something to consider way down the line. To have a starting point for entrenched stuff, right? But we do want to do three elites, right? And we want these three elites to go smoothly. It should be relatively okay. Alright, guys. Do we want more help in boss and elite fights? I'm uh, sorry, in hallways? Or do we really want to... I mean, Anchor change, Anchor's really nice to help save with Ice Cream. So if we have Anchor turn 1, we don't have to block as often. We have more energy to play more cards with Ice Cream, which is also pretty damn good. Not having to focus on block means we have extra energy. The extra energy goes into damage. The same damage that Sitting of Courage would provide. Alright, so Anchor is... Maybe on average saving two energy. That two energy could equal two strength worth of damage. It's kind of tough to say because we have pummel in the deck. And the pummel in the deck might make a difference here. It makes this card uh, do eight more damage. But also with vulnerable, an extra 12 damage. So it gives me an extra 12 damage with pummel with vulnerable. And an extra, I don't know, extra 12, 10 damage in general. Let's try this. Let's try this out. Do we want to buy a flex pot and uh, take that to the elites? Yeah. Mutagenic strength is fantastic. Don't do we like that? We like that. Let's go ahead and upgrade. Maybe now we have a couple upgrades, right? We can go for shockwave, burn weakening. We can get more energy out of bloodletting. We can go for Truga to make this more playable. And say that our attacks are just fine. We can go here and get even more out of the Sling of Courage now. Now this gives me an extra 10 damage on Sling of Courage. Which is decent. Or an extra 15 if they're vulnerable with Sling of Courage. So that's a pretty decent upgrade. Truga just gives me the ability to target my exhaust, which is pretty damn nice. Terminal Pummel would be huge. Let's, let's play around our damage here. We have Shockwave. We have Disarm. We have Fire Breathing. And we have... Um, Iron Wave. We didn't take advantage of Mutagenic Strength, unfortunately, but... Alright, so Pummel's already playing Dividends. Emily's doing work. And... Let's block a little bit. I have one more turn of vulnerable. I want to use it. Do I use the Reaper or do I just focus on the strikes here? It's a lot of damage on these strikes. Who wants to do Reaper to heal for 9? Or would you rather just do the 12 damage? For sure, Elo. Take care, man. Have fun with your meeting. I use Flexpot to just win this fight now. 
How much life does it save? He is disarmed, right? So with disarm, um, Tori blocks it, yeah? Now we can get a Reaper. It'll be a deal to get a Reaper here. Oh, we had Reaper, but... So blue candles, whatever. And now... Take your Trico and enjoy your uh, meeting. But now we have Barricade, Perfected Strike, and another Reaper. What's up, Cyro Shards? How you doing, buddy? There's also Perfected Strike for more damage. Who's the boss? The champ? Maybe we take Barricade and bite the bullet. Even though our block's not that great. But we can get Barricade out in this champ fight. And, you know, maybe this Peepot sees some play. And this is the second time Barricade's showing up. Maybe it's, uh, it's trying to tell me something. However, this deck does not have a lot of blocks, so Barricade feels very bad. And it's most certainly going to be a curse most of the time. But maybe I could just take this curse, and it will no longer be a curse down the line. Once I, uh... Once I kind of see more card choices. Now it makes it feel a little bit worse about not taking Anchor, because with Anchor, Barricade has a little bit of starting point, you know? Now we could ignore that altogether. Uh, there's also just a third Reaper, which is interesting. Which is also AoE block in its own right, you know? Who wants to bite the bullet and grab the Barricade here? Thanks for the 100 bits. I really appreciate the Sour Charge. Are we okay taking this Barricade Curse? And pivot into like a Barricade deck down the line? We really don't have that much block. And these two Reapers make it feel kind of awkward, right? Think about it. These two Reapers are kind of really costly. And they do not help me in a Barricade deck at all. This is leading towards like a Strength sort of deck. Let's go for maybe more energy with Bloodletting, because we have a lot of expensive cards. And let's go for two elites, like we said. I'll take the War Paint. Oh, Trigger Plus, look at that. Oh, look at this. What a turn. What a turn. Look how, look how much energy we have now. Look how much energy we have. You, th you think he's attacking us right now? You think this man's attacking us? Who's to say? Uh, he could be attacking us for sure now. If we use Flex Flight, we can kill the minions. Do we want to do that? Oh, we can actually even kill him. Our, our potion chance is getting pretty high, yeah? Our potion chance is getting pretty high, so we can use Flex here to kill this fight. On the other hand, we can also just take damage and Reaper back up. Because we have uh, two more Reapers in the deck. So, why use a potion when we have two more Reapers in the deck to heal up? So that we gotta make that decision. Two Reapers in the deck is pretty likely we're gonna heal this damage up. Right? So why waste the potion, necessarily? What do you guys think? With two Reapers... Eh, okay, Fire Breathing might mess us up a little bit. But it feels like a waste to waste this potion with Reaper, I think. You got, But they have plus 7 strength. They're gonna, they're gonna hit hard. They're going to hit hard. But Reaper can still heal this, though. Of course, I got to draw into Reaper. I have two of them. And I have Battle Trends. He's going to hit hard as well, but they're weakened. They're all weakened. He's also... They all have 7 Strength. So what's the base damage of the Gremlin Leader? Does anybody know the base damage? What's the base damage of Gremlin Leader, guys? Six?
Well, we're not gonna use it with Reaper. With Reaper, we just heal up, anyways. Well, because we have two Reapers, that's why we take damage. We have two Reapers. And there's massive health pools to heal from this. Two Reapers. But does anybody know the base damage of the Grimmel Leader? Six times three, right? So we're looking at... Um, 13 times three, but he's weakened. She's weakened. Um, I think we're looking at 50 damage here. I think we're looking at 50 damage here, right? Looking at 50 damage here? Or maybe less, maybe less. Um... Hey, yeah, we'll Reaper here. So he could resummon, yeah? If he doesn't resummon, that's gonna feel bad. Should I draw Bash? I keep the potion. We keep the potion. But now we got a bronze pot that we gotta think about versus speed pot. I think I like the speed pot better. We didn't lose that much life for that. We would have been at uh, you know full life, but now we're a little bit less. It was a chance I took because I take a short boomerang because we have strength now. So I take I take short boomerang here, but uh, I gotta make a decision between liquid bronze and speed pot. I think I still like speed pot better, right? Liquid bronze is not that great. Speed pot I think can do a little bit more for big turns. So I'll block like this. I don't know the damage that they're outputting right now. Okay, not big, not big deal at all. Could he heal up here? I don't know if he's still attacking or not. Don't know if he's still attacking or not. Don't mix the game harder, yeah, because you, you, you get to make a lot of guesswork. You know, that's not fun. It's not fun. But here we are. We're full life regardless, so. Not much to say here. Full life, no problem. Uppercut is good because we get more weakened. Are we okay with getting more weakened with the uppercut, guys? Are we okay with this? And now we got to keep our flex pot, which might be important. The flex pot might be important for the, the champ here. I love avocado. Avocado is great. This flex pot might be necessary for the champ. We might get an ancient pot and might need the strength for the champ. You never know. So this flex pot is good to hold on to. Got the slavers. A good MLA turmoil would be huge. So we're going to be taking damage here. But... I think this is the best course of action. The Sharm saves the most life throughout the whole fight. We got to get drawn to bloodletting here. Decent damage here. Reaper heals a decent amount as well. Tori's doing work. Reaper heals again. Can also just kill this guy. And then this fight's over. Disarmor's been doing work. Over. Got the boot. That's not a relic we necessarily want to see. Alright, so now we got Inflame, which is more strength, which is good. 
which is Dark and Base for Card Draw. Dark and Base for Card Draw means pretty good with Ice Cream, but I think the Inflame kind of goes with Pummel and the Shore Boomerang, and makes Reaper better as well. So I'm okay with Inflame here. There's a, there's a world where we talk about Fiend Fire. So Fiend Fire turn 1 would be massive because we have Mutagenic Strength. So Fiend Fire turn 1 is very good. It also shreds the deck of trash like Strikes. And we can draw into the cards we care about more often, like Immolate. Although we don't really have like super crazy scaling against this um, this champ right now. One, one thing I like to have against the champ is like some kind of scaling, but we don't have that. We kind of just have more linear front-loaded damage. Dark Embrace gives us card draw, which... We can utilize with ice cream and do things, but I think I like the inflame. Although fiend fire is something to think about, because it does dump our strength, and it also cleans the deck of trash. And when we can draw into our these cards, like like once we get rid of reapers and disarm and shockwave, this deck is actually quite small. Fire breathing gets rid of itself, shockwave gets rid of itself, reapers get rid of themselves, disarm gets rid of itself, the curse gets rid of itself, pummel gets rid of itself, right? And then we're left with just like. A relatively small deck that's pretty pretty nice. If we get rid of all these strikes, you know what I'm saying? But these strikes are going to be quite useful, I suppose. Or are they? Or are they? Inflame does give me the more more damage to, to kind of handle the champ here. Fiendfire is a uh, pretty good turn one, though, I would say, with Eugenic Strength. It's kind of close here. What's better on average? A big old dumper. Let's take the inflame here. Speed power versus dexterity. Do we want to take dexterity to have um, more consistent block against the champ, or do we want to have the speed pot for the champ? What's better? Consistent block or burst block? Consistent block seems better for boss fights in general. I mean, that's like a no-brainer, right? And if we upgrade uppercut, we have more consistent weaken as well. It feels like consistent block is a no-brainer against the champ. And then if we get a, a artifact, that changes our, our whole story. But let's say we decide to do dexterity part for the champ. Just to buy us time to kind of... But what are we buying time for against the, chance, the champ? What are we buying time for, honestly? I mean, we kind of just have to smork him and try to just hope for the best, right? What we could do is save the speed part for the, the execute turn with a turn where it's really dangerous. And just block like crazy in the execute turn. And it kind of carries over sometimes with Calipers in a small, in a perfect world. Although, Calipers only keeps 15. That's like already like speed pot already down the drain. I'll do this. I'll go for the consistent play. And we do want some upgrades, right? So I want to upgrade Uppercut. I probably also want to upgrade Inflame. And now we got to make a decision. Between an event or versus an, a fight. I kind of want to do an event because there's some decent events we haven't seen yet. Like upgrade all the strikes. The Red Mask event. We haven't seen the, the Coliseum, that we can destroy the Coliseum. There's a lot of good events. So they're giving us Bites. Um, we can just lose all of our strikes and just get Bites. For the price of Blood Vow. And we actually... How many... We haven't even removed st strikes yet. So it would just be an even trade. Just upgraded strikes, basically. Seems okay, yeah? No max HP lost. Even trade of 5 strikes for 5 Bites. I mean, you can't say no to this, right? It's just an even trade. Let's upgrade in flame. Maybe show boomerang to dump our strength better. Maybe show boomerang. And we take a lot of chip damage with Tori, right? So it just it bites helps us with that as well. I haven't made any strike up removes exactly, and there's, there's better than strikes. There's even trade, so you know it's really easy choice there. So inflame is the upgrade or sober ring. I think inflame is the upgrade here. All right, so now we got to decide how we're going to beat this fight because this fight is probably a little scary for us. It's a decent turn to do pummel. It's a decent turn to do pummel, right? Do we just go off and do flex now and just try to get as much damage, or we can get more out of flex? Maybe we can get more out of flex with like Shobum Ring down the line. Here we get weak and we also have Disarm in the deck. I mean, I wish we had more energy, but... Pummel just seems too good to pass up here. Only reason why I don't like... Well, I do flex, but I do a decent amount of damage right now. 
And then I would have to skimp out an uppercut, but I like to have permanent weak and invulnerable, so I'm gonna save the flex spot. Try to get permanent weak and invulnerable here. Taking 13, but we have bites. Now I have no idea what he's doing. But I'm gonna hope that Tori does work here, and it does. Get more consistent and vulnerable. And I'm gonna keep smacking him using my face. Alright, that was a lot of face right there. I'm gonna get rid of these defense because they're not that good. Oh, I forgot to use the dexterity part. I'm so sorry. Forgot to use the dexterity part. I'm weak and so Reaper does less for me. What are we even true grit here, guys? What are we even true grit? Maybe you true grit the Reaper? We don't even know if he's attacking or not. What do we trigger it? Maybe the defend? I could have saved the dexterity pad, but I, I, honestly, the dexterity pad is not that good in hallway fights. I like to use it for boss fights. We could have saved some life. Maybe we don't trigger Reaper. Maybe we just maybe we just play play everything. Perfect. We're still weakened. And now what happens is if I if I do this now, we're gonna take him to the next phase. We can take him to the next phase, but we're gonna be vulnerable for the attack. And I wanna be not be weakened when I use Super Marine. But we're gonna be vulnerable for the attack. Is that a problem? We could use this arm, potentially. We also could draw into weaken. It depends. If I do this now. And then I don't draw into uppercut. We'll have weaken for his his big uh, multi attack, and we might have disarm. It, it totally depends. It's 50 50. We might get uppercut disarm for the multi attack, or we might get a bad draw. That's pretty risky. Can I ever overblock with calipers? I don't think so. I don't think we can get to overblock with calipers. We only have four defense in the deck. I would need to start triggering a lot more stuff. Now the problem is we are weakened. But next time we can do a really big uh, flex spot turn. For sure revolutionary, I would do more videos on YouTube. Um, do we ever die here? Avocados or zucchini? I don't know, I, I eat more avocados than I have eaten zucchini. We are weakened. Next time we are not. We're going to be vulnerable for his multi-attack. Which makes him do what? 33 times 2? Worst case scenario, we can block it, yeah? He does 33 times 2, yeah? But what if we just save a lot of energy as well? I don't know, guys. Yes, so it's, 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 it's going to be very hard to dodge the vulnerable when I cancel the intense. It's true. It is true. Um, there's a good chance that if we split him next turn or proc him next turn. We won't, but he might just make me vulnerable anyways. But if I do this now, there's a decent chance that fifty percent chance of fifty percent of the time I have uh, uppercut disarm on after he does his thing. Which would be huge. If I get it prematurely though, that's really bad, right? In the worst case, we still survive. We're also weakened. I don't know, guys. Do I just do roll another dice and maybe just kind of get more energy and kind of uh, feed out the deck a little bit more? Maybe just chill here and don't do anything? I don't know if he's attacking or not. I'm do this. Do we have bloodletting coming up? We don't. But I don't want to draw back into Reaper later on, right? But I also want to keep my energy here. Okay. This is good. So if I do nothing here, 
I have uppercut disarm, which is perfect. It's exactly what we want to see. This is perfect. This blocks for a lot now. This blocks for a lot. Now he's vulnerable. We could do flex bar, we could just win. All right, we don't need to do flex bar here. We can hold on to it. I don't even need bloodletting, but it helps, yeah? I don't need bloodletting though. Is any kind of just already dead? He's kind of already dead, isn't he? I can just keep flex for like a rainy day. Maybe I keep flex for the heart at this point. Four extra energy. He's dead. So how much damage do we have? 18. 13. 31. 47. 47 plus. This is 59. There's also like boot considerations, right? There's also the boot. He lives with a little bit of HP. But then we could do how much is it? Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. Um he does he's not doing like a crazy big attack, right? He's weakened, I'm not vulnerable. And I block for 18 plus I also heal for 12. Actually I block for I block for uh, 25. So we never die here, yeah? Block for 25 and we heal for 12. He hits two times now, but he's he's only got nine strength and he's weakened and I'm not vulnerable. And I'm gonna have 14 extra life, so I'm gonna be at 32, plus I'm blocking for 25. I'm blocking for 25 and he's weakened. So 32. There's 25. He never does that much more damage. There's no way he does... Yeah, we're, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good here. Keep the flex spot forever. All right, we beat Act Two. Now we get the prediction. Whoever, now we're gonna go for Act Three, baby. The dome is just making my life harder, of course. But well, no one's predicting no one on beating Act. So the, these predictions don't really mean much because everybody's predicting yes. Everybody has too much belief, which is a good thing. You guys should have a belief. I'm not losing, or are we? I don't know. Again, these are not that good rares. Where's the impervious? Where's the offering? Where's... Where are the better rares? Okay, so we have Brutality, Double Tap, and Berserk. Um... Yeah, we have all the rares and the relics, that's true. So we have Double Tap. Who cares about Double Tap? Double Tap, Uppercut. Double tap Reaper, double tap Immolate. Is it even good? Is it even good? Double tap Sword Boomerang for damage. Maybe double tap is decent here. Maybe double tap with Immolate or double tap with uh, Sword Boomerang or double tap Uppercut. I don't know. It could definitely increase my weaken potential and my vulnerable potential. It could increase my strength dumping with Sword Boomerang. Brutality gives us more card draw, more options, right? So let's say we use bloodletting and we have some energy. We have one battle trends in the deck. Brutality gives us, at the price of playing it early, more cards to work with. And uh, that's saying something. Double tap out on average. I think on average double tap can do some good stuff though. Yeah, so we can we can we can kind of heal up the brutality with bites, no problem. But we gotta ask, is double tap more proactive? Is the ability to play Pummel twice, or Shubber Ring twice, or Uppercut twice, 
or Reaper, any of these Reapers twice, or the Emulate twice. I mean, how important is that? If we had Pyramid, it would be better. Yeah, with Pyramid, it would be a lot better. That's true. Uh, better chance for card draw. And we don't have Evolve. But you gotta understand, I have enough Reapers that Double Tap Reaper shows up pretty often. Would I rather... Do I like Double Tap Reaper? That's, that's a decent block turn, right? Double Tap Reaper allows me to use my face for block. And a Double Tap Reaper for 3 energy is blocking for sometimes 30 plus. I don't know. When, when do I play Brutality, right? Like, so I have to upgrade Brutality, right? Because when, when do I play it otherwise? If I don't play it on turn 1, I'm going to lose a card draw playing it. On the turn that I find it. So without upgrading, Brutality is going to be negative card draw. Can I afford that in this deck? Where at least with Double Tap, if I draw Double Tap, it's pretty proactive every time I draw it. It does Sober Mering twice. It does more Weaken and Uppercut. Right? So Permanent Weaken is really good. It maybe does crazy amount of Immolate damage. It gives me more block with Iron Wave. Because Iron Wave is like a block card of mine. So Double Tap can give me block as well. It gives me block with Reaper. Or, or healing. All right, so when, if I draw Brutality in a turn that's not turn one, I mean, it feels like shit. So then it's basically saying, okay, you gotta upgrade this, this Brutality. All right. If I, is there anything else I want to upgrade instead? I mean... I, like, I would like to upgrade... Uh, um, Shockwave, maybe. Ah, I don't know. Shockwave is less important than Uppercut. I would like to upgrade Iron Wave. Iron Wave is like one of my block cards. I mean, at this point, Iron Wave is good. Upgrade Super Boomerang. Yeah, this deck is having trouble with the heart. We might have to save Flex Pot. We might have to uh, figure something out. You know, maybe Calibers and Trench will pop off at some point. But uh, this is, I, I'm not a big fan of Double Tap in general. Uh, I'll be honest. I'm really not a big fan of Double Tap in general. But, upgrade double tap is a good way to uh, waste energy as well. Like, if we're having excess energy, double tap can kind of help that as well. But still, I'm not thrilled by it. I'll throw, I'm going to try it out, because in the vein of, of being experimental here. So, if I take Calling Bell, I get three more relics, and I get another Curse for Dubu Doll. Right? And then we're going to have a decent amount of pain. Sorry, a decent amount of uh, strength. Or if I take Slaver's Collar, I have even more energy for the Elite and boss fights. But with a Dude with all the bell kind of goes up in value, yeah? It gives me a Vajra as well. So it not only does it give me three relics, but it also gives me a Vajra for one negative card draw. And we have Blue Candle. These, these relics were not that great. These relics were not that great. Singing Bowl this late is not that great, but maybe get some play. Get some max HP to help with the Reaper. And then Sharon's Ashes is some AoE. I don't hate it, but it's, it's you know, it's whatever. And Regal Pillow, I might not, might not even get any use at all. I may not even use Regal Pillow at all. Let's go for Elites. Are there any Elites we have trouble with? Like Giant Head, for instance. How scared of Giant Head are we? There's also a lot of events. Who's scared of Giant Head? Do I go here for more events? So I can go here and get an extra event and get one less elite? Or. Do I go here and get one more elite? Elites are pretty good for us because we have strength with Dubudol and uh, Sling of Courage. So we get one more elite here. Would we rather have an elite or an event is the question. Would we rather have one more... One more elite or one more event? The event could be... I guess we're looking for Mind Bloom at that point, right? Sorry, we get two extra events for one elite. 
Two extra events for one elite. What's what's more important, guys? Let's go for it. two extra events. Now Blood needs to see more play, that's the thing. Blood, Blood needs, to see, needs to see more play. If you want, you gotta donate... Uh... Oh, we got more Bloodletting. So we're okay with taking an extra Bloodletting, right? With uh, ice cream? Like one more Bloodletting seems fine because our energy, our deck's pretty energy heavy. We just need card draw now. The rules? Okay. The rules are we go on Discord, you pick the class, you pick the Ascension level, We I screen share your screen, and we go for who can beat the Ascension level the fastest. And if we both lose or whatever, we go by score. But we could always change the rules up, you know? But it seems like s speed is the number one indicator. You know what I mean? Ascension 20 would be fun. Can we squeeze another blood in here? I would say yes. But now we just gotta find more card draw, which is not guaranteed at all. Yeah, just score based. Cause they say like I I died because I I, I went for like seven thousand elites. You died because you just couldn't beat the boss. In that case, um. I get rewarded, you know? So, Intimidate is too AoE weakened, but it's not the kind of... We have a lot of energy. I don't want to waste uh, a card slot on that. I think we take max HP here. The Shrike needs some max HP for our Reaper to heal it with use our face, you know? Yes, this is pretty nice because it does Charon's Ashes and it does AoE weak. But we do not have the card draw to justify this. If we had, like, Dark Embrace... 100% Dark Embrace or like another Battle Trance or... No, it's not a Seated Run. It, I, I make up the, the Seed on the fly. Alright, let's go. Backup Prep will be huge. I know there's a Reaper here, but I want to save... Uh... I want to save my energy here. Same seat, I make it, up, make it up on the fly. We're using our face to block here. So we have lethal. Whoa! Okay. And maybe this is how we beat the game. Just, all right, we weren't finding anything. Dead Branch, take the wheel. And that's how we use that energy. You don't have card draw? Okay, Dead Branch creates cards to put energy into. And now we have card draw burning packed. And just like that, on that floor alone, we won the game. On that floor alone, we won the game. Energy, card generation. Oh my god. Card draw, Bernie Pact. Oh my god. Bernie Pact is also very huge. Alright, so the max, a lot of max HP here. Do you guys like these cards? Panache? Doesn't seem necessary. Oh, sorry. Prediction for Act 3. Alright, let's, let's, let's go straight to the heart then. Yeah, the prediction's a little unfair now. Um, who doesn't love Panache? Yeah. Panacea has some play. I like it. What about Madness with Dead Branch? I mean, Madness just creates cards with Dead Branch and makes something else cheaper. But I think Panacea is also pretty good. Artifact is huge with mutagenic strength, and it creates a card. Dark Shackles is very good, and it creates a card. Uh, 
I used to play a little bit of Magic the Gathering. Oh god, they're making us lose one of our Reapers. Are we that connected to Panacea? I feel like Panacea is with Flex Pot is pretty good. We can even stop the Vulnerable against the Heart. So we can have 5 Strength of Panacea, or we can lose one of our Reapers. Disinflame Plus? You guys think we should Disinflame Plus? What's up, Mindy? It has been that long. That branch. Give up the panacea. You guys, the inflation is still pretty decent, right? Three reapers might be overkill. We do have three reapers, and we double tap, so we might not need three reapers. But with our face being our tanking method and our dead branch, the reaper is also pretty decent because it also gives us cards. But if you think about it, Inflame doesn't give us Dead Branch cards. And if I use Panacea Turn 1, I can get 8 Strength. Yeah, exactly. But that's asking a lot. I mean, who's going to get Panacea Turn 1? Inflame and Turn 2 card deck? Sure. Inflame and Turn 2 card deck? Yeah, sure. At the same time, Panacea after turn 1 is not as good. We can bring a pillow if we're worried about this fight, but we have Reapers and we have Region Putt. So I think we just don't rest at all. And if we don't rest, we're upgrading what? More card draw? Maybe double tap? It feels bad resting here with Region Putt and Reapers, yeah? It's a little risky not to rest, but we can get it by with it. So, I think if we upgrade a card... I mean, there's also another Elite Fight right here. I don't know this guy's intentions, unfortunately. He could be doing a whole number of things right now. He got Barricade. Um... I mean, not having intentions kind of sucks, but I'm, my potion chance is pretty decent, so I'm going to do this. I shrug it off as well. I mean, I, don't, I have no idea what this guy's intentions are. Oh, I got another bloodletting. Wow. I can spend three energy in Barricade or just not play it at all. I don't think we play Barricade here. We don't have enough block for it. I would have saved 11 block though. Eh. I would have saved 11 block. This might be a decent, uh, might be a decent, uh, no. Barricade would have saved 11, but I also wouldn't have had the energy, you know? He's not weakened here, unfortunately. Could be dead here. Could be dead here. But we're not. Trigger plus is good block and it gives me um dead branch stuff. I think trigger plus is fantastic. Alright, we're looking for a good events here. That's, that's decent. Brimstone, that's how we beat the heart. Brimstone is how we beat the heart. We can even use the fruit juice. Brimstone and we beat the heart? What do you guys think? Now we have strength scaling for the heart. And then we um, we manage the strength of the heart with uh, dark shackles. We manage the strength of the heart with dark shackles and we manage it with uh, one disarm. And Brimstone gives us Reaper. 
So who's feeling brimstone? Now, we can go for a f fruit juice to have more max HP because we're going to be using... We're going to have to be using our, our, H our HP as a... Uh, as a resource, or we can remove a bite. Wait, maybe we remove defend at this point. Maybe we remove defend at this point. Is fruit juice worth the max HP or remove a defend here? Defense are pretty bad. We're never we're not really playing defense too often. Bite is still kind of like eh, it's still kind of a mediocre card though. Bite is still kind of mediocre, but you know, it's still dumps our strength, which is important. We have to get rid of this. Look at that strength. Look at that strength. Look at this strength, guys. She never kills me here, yeah? I feel like I'm being crazy, but she never kills me here. Now we need to look for Reaper. We got a lot of Reapers in the deck. Look for card draw first. Big Reaper. GG. I got Brimstone, boys. Red Skull. Whoa. 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 And now we have strength deck all over the place. I kind of just want to get max HP at this point. I just want max HP, and I want to just use my face. Strength unlimited, baby. This is Ironclad right here. Tori to... Guys, Tori for the multi-hits. So none of these are good as better than max HP, yeah? Dead Branch gives us card draw to use our energy, basically. It gives us card generation. This fight's a little annoying. This fight's a little annoying. Because I have no idea if I'm going to get cursed or not. I really hope that I won't be. Here's hoping. Alright, let's try to get Reaper. Big heal. Havoc. So now, we have a Havoc with Body Slam. Sorry. Havoc with uh, Dead Branch. It just plays cards. Now, sometimes it plays my Reaper prematurely, right? Or it plays um, my Battle Trance, right? Or it plays my Strength Dumper prematurely. But it gives me more cards. Charon's Ashes. More cards and more genera generation of Dead Branch. Which potentially gives me Corruption for to win the game. And, you know, basically this replaces itself with something else. While doing damage. I don't know. It also saves energy as well. You can play Shackles prematurely as well. But Shackles is not as good. I'm explaining why Shackles is not good. I don't know if he's multi-attacking or not. I don't know if he's multi-attacking. So, Shackles is just like a 50-50% chance anyways, whereas Havoc just gives me like some energy actually because of the, uh, the fact that it plays things for free and it gives me a, a whole new card. I really I really value Havoc in Dead Branch decks, I really do, because this deck, it has so much value from Brimstone that like it's going to win the fight in 4 or 5 turns. The fight's going to be over in 4 to 5 turns. So, I just gotta get things out and gain energy. Because the heart's gonna be dead in 4 to 5 turns with this. That's the hope. Let's think about this for a little bit longer. I know you guys are like, oh my god, this is the longest run you've ever done. I know, but let's see here. Now, I don't think any corruption would be hurt. Tori's gonna block the multi attacks. Right? membership card. Heavy Blade. Heavy Blade is really good. Heavy Blade is something you can buy here. That's a great upgrade. And with Brimstone, Heavy Blade is just fantastic. That's something we can buy. Blood Pot is something to think about as well. Nah, we don't need Funeral Pain because Heavy Blade just dumps her strength and kills the Act 4 Elite and, and bosses before they even 
Fiddle doesn't do anything here. It's good, but Heavy Blade dumps things and kills things quickly. So I, what's going to happen is here, I'm using Reaper to heal and my strength to kill. So I'm going to need um, this big hits like Heavy Blade to, to do 200 damage a turn to the heart. And to destroy the Awakened One or the Time Meter easily. These potions, I'm going to keep these potions that I have. We're not blocking here, guys. So we can go one more event here to look for a uh, Mind Bloom. Which, at this point, is just a rare relic, right? It can still show up on floor 47, no? It doesn't give me the gold past floor 47, but it can still show up, no? Or I can go for a card reward to get more max HP with Singing Bowl. Heavy Blade's going to absolutely slap. Um, max, this gives me max HP, potentially. And, or, let's go for here. Oh, beautiful. Red Skull. That's huge. That's huge. Let's see what happens here. Um, that's a lot of damage. But we're gonna have even more damage where that comes from. Like with heavy blades and stuff. She's not attacking. Dark Shackles is a, is a hit or miss here. Oh my god. Oh my god. I think we Dark Shackles just in case, yeah? Let me pass here. Pass your way for vulnerable. Power through is big. Wait, how much damage is this? Uh, map time. Nine times... 37. <laughs> and who wants to block, guys? Who the hell wanted block? Oh my god. Somebody wanted block. Evening T fix. Thanks for Twitch Prime. Welcome back, buddy. Let's see what this gives us. Might as well keep these things alive. They're, they're just good for Reaper, right? Someone wanted block. Double tap Heavy Blade. Double tap Immolate. I have lethal here if I do inflame. How dangerous is that? I'm giving him a, a extra strength. How dangerous is that? I have lethal, right? We would have to we would have to draw into our uh, our reapers, right? Which we have only one left right here, and then there's a big chance that he does a big. Ah, eh, we have decent outs though. Boom. And then we have decent outs, I said. We have decent outs, I said. We have decent outs, I said. <laughs> what? The alternative is actually to uh pummel first, yeah? Let's look for Reaper. How about we bite and get heal full heal? 
and getting Chaku stacked up. Bye. And this is Rimstone, boys. So we gotta do that against the heart, right? Against the heart, we gotta kill it within four to five turns. Now it's important that we that Tori hits, that we can die to the big hit against the heart. So that's, that's, that's the scariest part. We're keeping these potions. Tori has to go big. If we're gonna upgrade a card, it's probably gonna upgrade uh, Battle Trend so we can dig deeper for the cards we wanna see. Because this is permanent weakens is already gonna ma not gonna matter. Um, I would say the best upgrade is just more card draw, just to kind of get the cards we want to see. Nah, I'm already full heal. I'm, I'm, I'm only missing 6 life, and we, we get 6 life very easily in this, this fight, so... I think the pummel was better. Because um, I, I would have run out of energy. The only upgrade I can see is the battle trance, just to get more card draw so we can hit that reaper that we need to see. So, it, this is just the, the best car there is and then we have no money so oh oh no one told me this was at the shop no one told me this was at the shop okay well that would have been huge let's do this look for like some some exhaust cards we have exhum that's interesting I want to save my energy here. Do I have flex spot for this turn? Um, and I can re reaper to heal back up. How much damage do we have? Let's take a look, because we have forty nine plus thirty six. All right, so we're 85, 85. Let's flex by here. Can bring back Reaper, but um. We have more Reapers in the deck. How much is this doing? Perfect. Done. And to really, to really, really, really bring home the shrink deck, we get a Vajra. And a smoke that's useless. All right, so Trugrit is a block card that gives me cards from Dead Branch. So I think Trugrit is just better than Flame Barrier. Trugrit is just better than Flame Barrier because of the exhaust nature. I may not even want to take block cards. I might have been bad. I may not even want to take block cards. If you get corruption, it's game over, by the way. Let's see what power we get. Barricade's interesting. Is, barricade's better than skipping for sure, yeah? For sure. I wonder if I play Reaper now just to kind of make sure I don't get, um... I can look for the exhaust stuff. And this next couple turns are going to be bad because I'm going to be vulnerable. So I need to mitigate the multi-attack with Disarmor, Dark Shackles, right? And... Um, I 
Alright, we have Exhume. Alright, we're gonna need to make sure that um we get your Sharmer Dirk Shackles here. Oh, this is bad. This is bad stuff. This is bad, but we have Reapers in the deck, yeah? At least he's weakened. Do I take Bloodletting? Bloodletting is probably worth it. Yeah, I know I have Tori. However, he may not multi attack. Uh, the big hit is what hurts. I feel like I should be doing damage every turn. I feel like I should be doing damage every turn. We have Tori, so we're, we're fine. We have Tori here. Oh no, he's getting he's, he's getting like, he's approaching um We got we get, he's approaching what's it called? Uh, uh, out of Tory range, I believe. Oh no, with Weaken he's we're still in Tory range? With Weaken you're still in Tory range, yeah? I'm taking too much self damage here. Yeah. I need to get a massive Reaper. I have two Reapers in the deck. And Flame feels like it's not worth the energy because I have so much damage as it is, right? Um, we're still at Torio range, but I gotta be careful because. So I gotta do damage. Reaper's gonna change this fight around big time. But I gotta be doing damage here, guys. Because I gotta kill him within, um... <sighs> I gotta kill him within... The next... Three turns. I have to race him. Do we look for double tap here? Oh! We have disarm, but we can't. We, we, have, we have uppercut with this disarm? If so much damage is ridiculous. I ran out of energy though. So this is the multi hit we're screwed, no? Does the multi-hate were screwed? Alright. Please don't be multi-hit, no? Fuck, man. So it was a race, and it was all down to the multi-hit. So one problem we didn't get, god damn it, was disarm before he did the split. If we got disarm early, if we got disarm early, then um, I, I don't die there. And then we just win the next turn. Damn, that's really unlucky. Really good run otherwise, though.